It seems every spring the anti-holiday crowd gets more emotional about bunnies and eggs than about the resurrection of our savior. Claiming they are nothing more than pagan signs of fertility that crept into the Easter celebration. Like with Christmas, the evidence for this is lacking. And the only evidence that is given is it seems like they're pagan fertility symbols, therefore they must be. But that is nothing more than an association fallacy at best. And the truth is much more complex than they make it out to be. The first thing to note is the claim that the word Easter descends from the name of a pagan deity, like Ishtar or Ostara. Well, this is not true. The holiday is only called Easter, or similar names in Germanic languages. Traditionally, it is called Pascha, because it derives from the celebration of Passover, which occurs around the same time. This is the primary name for the holiday in regions that speak Latin or Greek-derived languages. So trying to connect Ishtar, a goddess from the Middle East, is nothing more than an association fallacy, and there's really no evidence of it. The anti-holiday crowd also needs to be careful here. Some skeptics try this very reasoning with the Book of Esther, and say it is nothing more than a Jewish copy of the Babylonian mythology of Ishtar and Marduk. Just because the words sound similar, that doesn't make one a copy of the other. Just like how the name Cephas is not derived from Serapis, just because they sound similar. Some claim Easter comes from the name of a Germanic spring goddess, Ostara. However, the only source to ever say the worship of this goddess existed was Saint Bede in the 7th century. And we can't find any other reference, Christian or pagan, to this goddess outside of Bede. Because of this, many scholars think he just made it up, or had some other goddess in mind but was terribly confused. So most scholars do not think this works either. No one is really sure where the word Easter came from, but the most probable explanation is the use of the Germanic word Easter came to be used for this holiday because it occurred around Ostaromanath, which was the fourth month on the Old English calendar. People saw that Resurrection Sunday was occurring in Ostaromanath, so they just started calling it the Ostaromanath celebration, and eventually it was just shortened to the Easter celebration. The closest thing that this can compare to is the celebration of 4th of July which is an American holiday that celebrates its independence. However, this has nothing to do with the month of July. It just happens to fall on the month of July. So people title the holiday with the date it occurs on. Calling Resurrection Sunday Easter likely resulted from a similar idea. It is also possible there was a spring goddess with a similar name, but we really can't be sure. And even if there was, it would not show that Pasha was blended with paganism to become Easter. However, more people are upset by the use of the Easter rabbit, which they are sure is a pagan fertility symbol. Why? Well, because it has to be. Bunny rabbits! I'm sure it's probably a fact that Ishtar in the, in the temple of Nineveh, the Ishtar temple, they probably never used bunny rabbits to worship the goddess Ishtar. But you have to be a complete moron to not understand that bunny rabbits have always been symbols of fertility by numerous people groups around the world. Even if that's true, there's no evidence the modern Easter Bunny derives from a pagan fertility symbol. The first reference to an Easter Bunny happened long after paganism died out in Europe in 1572. And originally, it was an Easter Hare, which is not the same animal as a rabbit, since they can't interbreed and rabbits are creatures we more commonly associate today with fertility because they are social animals living in colonies and are often seen together in groups. So you see more of them and assume they're more populous. They also produce quicker and more often than their cousin the hare. Whereas hares live mostly in solitary, and it is rare to see them together unless they are mating. The idea of the Easter Bunny is pagan came from Jacob Grimm in the 19th century. He had no evidence to assert this and only suggested it could be the case. But the rumor spread and the anti-holiday crowd still thinks this to this day. So there is no evidence the Easter Bunny came from a pagan fertility symbol. As Tanya Golovich said, the earliest known reference to the Easter Hare in any known historical document comes from a German book printed in the year 1572. The author writes, Do not worry if the bunny escapes you. Should we miss his eggs? Then we shall cook the nest. It is possible the Easter Hare predates this document, but we really can't say because the paper trail ends here, so there's no way we could trace it back to any pagan roots. The most probable explanation for why the hare or rabbit 
came to be associated with Easter is because you are unlikely to see them in the winter months because they are hiding from the cold like you are. In the spring they come out in abundance for mating season, so you see them quite often around Easter. So the 16th century Germans just made up a custom to go along with Easter that was already associated with spring. So no paganism can be traced here either. Easter eggs also have a hard time being traced back to paganism. Yes, eggs have been used in pagan rituals, but only for the same reason meat and crops have been used in pagan rituals. They are a commonly eaten food. The origins of where Easter eggs come from is not certain. You can hear claims they come from Celtic Druids, Babylon, Egypt, and even Japan. A commonly held belief is they come from Christians in Persia, who used to dye eggs red to symbolize the blood of Christ. But the evidence for that is scarce as well. Tanya Gulovich notes the first actual reference to Easter eggs comes from 1290, when King Edward I had 450 hard-boiled eggs decorated with golden leaves and given to his family members on Easter Sunday. Beyond that, we don't know because the paper trail ends there. But it is unlikely King Edward invented the tradition, since records from around the same time seem to indicate Easter eggs were known about in Poland and Germany as well. The most likely explanation has to do with Lent. During the days of Lent in medieval Europe, people would often refrain from meat, dairy, and eggs for the full 40 days. Towards the end of Lent, peasants would collect the eggs and hard boil them to preserve them for the end in the Easter celebration. Since dairy and meat were expensive and most often reserved for lords and the rich, most people would enjoy eggs as their holiday treat. As time progressed, people probably began painting and hiding them since it was a festive time and you tend to do more games and crafts during holidays or festivals. So no real evidence of paganism here, and the anti-holiday crowd has yet to provide any hard evidence for any pagan connections. Now for those who want to rant on about how cultures have used eggs and rabbits as pagan symbols, I'll refer you to my series on Christmas, where we show how illogical it is to reject something God created just because a pagan tried to corrupt it for their worship. We explain in that series that there is nothing inherently evil or sinful about painting an egg or decorating a pine tree. Now again, I want to be clear. We are not denying pagans have used rabbits, eggs, and words that sound similar to Easter to honor pagan gods. The failure of the anti-holiday crowd is twofold. First, they cannot show the modern customs, which are not attempts to worship or honor Christ, derived from any pagan ritual or celebration. And two, they cannot show logically how it is sinful to paint an egg or hide them in a game for children. Just because pagans have painted eggs in their rituals, that doesn't mean Christians are applying the same meaning when they do it. This is, again, an association fallacy. And when you apply this kind of logic elsewhere, you can see how ridiculous it is. For example, I could say it is pagan when the Bible calls Jesus the Lion of the tribe of Judah, because in ancient Egypt, the lion was the war god. So anytime we compare Jesus to a lion, we are honoring a pagan deity. I mean, I can go outside into nature and see for myself the lion is clearly a symbol of war. Christians most certainly cannot use wine when they partake in the Lord's Supper because pagans have used wine in ceremonies to honor the pagan deity Dionysus. I mean, you have to be a complete moron not to see wine as a symbol of Dionysus. I could go on and on with examples like this. So even if some archaeological find happens in the future, which proves that Christians took pagan rituals and symbols and turned them into good and safe customs, that would not somehow mean we are honoring pagan deities, since, as we said, God made these things anyway. So there is nothing to worry about, and until the anti-holiday crowd can do more than just fear-mongering from vague associations, we can continue to enjoy our holiday customs, guilt-free. So have a happy Easter and a Resurrection Sunday.